Hi everyone, welcome to Esoteric Tech. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a chat application in Go using WebSockets. A lot of talk about chat applications right now with ChatGPT, so maybe you'll watch this and then be inspired to build your own application. First part of this video is going to be providing a visual illustration of the logic of this application. So if you're a visual learner, you may find that helpful. The second part is going to focus on the coding. So if all you care about is that, feel free to go ahead and skip to that section. I do want to encourage you to please like and subscribe to this channel. The subscriptions are always appreciated as well as any feedback you may have. Let's get started. So the logic for this application is basically centered around two core concepts or entities. And those entities are a client and a room. So the client is our internal representation of the user. right? And the room is basically what connects the users. And it pretty much holds all of the business logic for our application, right? So that kind of determines how people are able to communicate across our application. And I guess the other important concept is WebSockets, but that is, that's a, that's a pretty easy concept. If you, if you already have some experience with, um, HTTP, WebSockets, it's nothing to be intimidated by. It's not like, it's not the same as having to go out and learn gRPC. So let me just draw this out real quickly. So, Let's say that we have our user here, right? So this is the person who wants to use our chat application. And then over here, this box is going to represent our application. Okay. And so typically uh, with HTTP protocol, we have a person that, you know, makes a request to our web server and then our web server sends a response back, right? Well, with a web socket, it's still uh, communicating over TCP. Uh, the only difference is that we create kind of this persistent bi-directional session so that we don't have to keep on making individual requests, right? It kind of opens up this continuous session that so that each party can send data back and forth. And so I like to kind of visualize this kind of basically as this tunnel that we kind of just open up and we can send messages back and forth. And so this represents our WebSocket session, right? And so, like I said, nothing to be intimidated about. That's a pretty easy, easy piece of the application to set up and get running. This is going to be our room, okay? Each one of our users gets their own kind of WebSocket connection with our application, right? So. This part here is kind of duplicated for however however many users uh, that we have on our application. So we've got this client object that we use to represent our users. This object is going to contain basically a pointer to our room, right? So pointer to our room. And then our room is also going to contain this list of every client that has basically joined our application. So if this is client one. I'm going to say we've got client, you know, C1, right? And let me draw a square there. We've got C2, we'll have C3, right? And so basically this client is responsible for sending and receiving messages out to our user. So when they receive a message or when our client receives a message from the user, basically we're going to forward that into our room and that message is going to be sent to every other client that's a member of that room. And whenever one of these clients sends a message, it's going to do the same thing. And so in that case, if C2 sent a message, it's going to be forwarded to C3 and C1. And then we just send that back out of the room and send it out on our session out to the user. And that's pretty much the logic of our application. It's not complicated. If you understand this diagram, uh, I guarantee you can understand the code. You do have to understand a little bit about uh, channels and go routines, uh, but it's nothing, nothing too complex. All right. So we've got our application directory here. 
and I've already added the necessary files. We've got a templates directory, which I'll go through in a little bit, then a client.go, main.go, and room.go. First file we're going to start writing the code for is our client.go. So as always, we're going to start out with our package declaration. And the only third party uh, library that we're going to be using for this project is actually this WebSocket, uh, this WebSocket module. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and write out the code for our client struct. Okay, and this client struct is going to have three fields. And as I mentioned, the client represents our user, or to be more specific, it represents the connection with our user. And so this first field is going to be uh, the WebSocket. So this is going to be kind of that connection that we use to send messages back and forth with the uh, user of our application. And then we have this receive channel. Right. And so this represents messages that we receive from other participants in the room. And so there's going to be a slice of bytes uh, just because that's typically how you uh, send, send or transmit data as a, as a slice of bytes. And then our room, as I mentioned, each client is going to have or hold a pointer to the room. So when this user sends us a message, we're going to forward it to the room. And our receive channel is what we receive when other people in the room want to write this particular user a message, right? And so uh, the two methods that this client struct is going to have is a read and a write. So let's start out with the write. I'm sorry, let's start out with the read, actually. And so for this particular function, this is going to be, this is going to handle the case in which the, the user is sending a message to the room, okay? And we always want to make sure that if we return from this function, we're going to close that, that connection. It's going to be a continuous loop, and we're just going to be reading messages from that socket connection, right? And if an error occurs when we read that message, then we return, and that's when we want the socket to close. But if we receive a message uh, from that socket, then we're going to forward it to the room, right? And the reason that forward and room are both read is because, obviously, we haven't created those yet, okay? And then for this write method, right, this is going to be the case in which we want to write a method out to the user, that this client represents. And so again, if we ever return from this method, we're going to close the socket because that means an error has occurred. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be reading a message from this client's receive channel, right? And then we use this uh, write message, which is a part of the socket, uh, this write function, I'm sorry, which is a part of the socket to write this message out. And this, this function takes uh, basically this constant. So we have to identify the type of the message and then we have to pass in our actual, you know, value, the bytes, right? And so again, if an error occurs, then we just return from this function. Let's go ahead and move on to the room. Right, our package declaration. Again, we're going to import the WebSocket module. And as I mentioned, uh, the room is pretty much going to hold all of our logic for our application. It's also going to keep track of all of the users that are communicating within a given room. All right, so this particular struct is going to hold a map of all of our clients. All right, and the reason I'm using a map instead of a slice is that a slice, I'm sorry, a map has a built-in delete function, right? Just can't really delete things from a slice. So this would just be a, a map of client to Boolean. The Boolean doesn't really matter. I just, I need some value. So uh, just make it a Boolean. Uh, and then I'm going to have a few channels. I'm going to have a join channel. So whenever a client joins our room, it's going to receive a value on this channel and add that client to the room. I'm going to have a leave channel, which uh, when the client wants to leave, it will receive that value and then remove them from the map, right? And then I'm going to have a forward channel, which is for communication. So this is what we saw being used in client.go. Whenever an individual client wants to send a message to the rest of the room, they'll send it on this channel. We'll iterate through the map, and then we'll send that message to all the other clients within the room, all right? Now, I'll actually write out a constructor for this. So this would be pretty simple and straightforward. Now I'll create a method called run, which will hold all of the logic that I just explained earlier. And this will just be a continuous loop with a select statement that listens for values on one of the three channels within the room and then uh, executes some code accordingly, right? So this particular case statement is going to listen to the join channel, right? And so when a user joins, we'll add them to the 
to the map. Let me scroll down some so you can see. Right, and then this case statement here is going to be uh, listening for the leave channel. Right, so we'll remove the user in that case. And in that case, we want to make sure we close the channel that we're communicating on with that client as well. All right. And then the next one uh, is where we're going to listen for messages on the forward channel. So this is messages that clients have sent that they want to send to the rest of the users within the room. And in that case, we're just going to iterate through the list of clients on the room and uh, send that message out. All right. Now, in order for any of this stuff to work, we've got to have some handler to receive an incoming request whenever we receive a new request from a user uh, and establish this WebSocket connection. So I'm going to create a couple of constants here to represent the buffer size uh, for our incoming and outgoing messages. And don't really focus on this too much. Uh, really just determines uh, how much data our buffers can hold uh, before they have to read and write. Of values or calls to the net to the network stack um, so yeah it's not not really too important uh, but this particular function here this is going to be our handler so it has a serve HTTP method uh, has typical handler signature right and what we're going to do is when we receive a new request we're going to create a socket by upgrading that connection so that that function that I created on line 57 right that upgrader is just that function with those default value set to them. And so I'm gonna pass in basically our, re our response here, right? And I just upgrade that. This is how you do that to create a WebSocket connection, okay? And of course, we're gonna check for the error. All right. And then we're gonna create a new instance of a client. Make sure that we send that to the room. And I think I added a new or another comma in there. Right? So make sure we send that client to the room so it can be added to the map. And if anything uh, happens, right, if this, if this handler closes out at any point in time, we're going to make sure we remove the client from the room. So ideally, this handler... Uh, shouldn't exit as long as this client is a part of the application. And the way that we do that is that the right function or right method of the client, we call that in a go routine. Remember, the write and read were just continuous loops. So we call this write in a go routine. And then right after that, we call this read method, right? And so this handler will never exit unless uh, the client closes out of the browser or some error occurs. Now let's hop over to our main.go, which is where we'll write the code to basically initialize our server. Okay, so here in our main.go, I've already written out the code, and I, I did that because I think it's easier to see it all at once rather than me you know, typing and explaining it to you. And so uh, first I want to go back to what I said earlier. I said I was going to talk about this templates packet. So in here, I've got this chat.html file, okay? And then I've also got this JS chat.js file. And this goes hand in hand with this template code that you see here. If you don't already know by now, uh, Golang has a built-in template package that allows you to basically return some HTML. And it also allows you to dynamically insert values into that and return it within the HTML. And that's the purpose of this here. So we've got this template handler, right, which is going to implement this serve HTTP method. Uh, it's going to have a file name, which is basically the location of that chat.html, right? It's got the template that we're going to generate, and then it's got this sync.once field. And the purpose of this sync.once is because whenever someone sends a request and it hits this handler, we want to make sure that this code here only gets executed once per request, okay? And what this code is doing is basically finding the template right within our within our application it's going to parse that uh, generate a template and so if you look at the signature here it returns a template and an error and this code here is just some code added on top so that I don't have to uh, actually check the error myself right this just accepts a template and an error and then panics if the error is not nil okay so don't get too confused with this stuff it's literally just finding the file parsing it returning a template and then you call the execute method on that return template. 
pass in the response writer and request, and it returns that parsed HTML template back out to the to the user. Okay, and so we're going to call this whenever someone hits the root of our application, right? So right here. So as soon as that happens, it'll return that. And then if I look into this template, it's got some JavaScript in there right here, which is going to automatically get executed. So this is going to automatically, as soon as it loads, it's going to make a request to slash room. All right. If I go back to my main.go, well, what we see here is slash room will call this, the room, and it automatically will call the handler because it's a handle function right so it'll call the handler method on our room and again just to remind you what that looks like go back to room here and right so pretty much we'll create a new socket connection create a new client and add our client to the room right and so we set up those two routes we establish our room go dot run and again this is all in our main dot go so this is where we're initializing our server Right, and then we call listen and serve to actually boot up our server. Right, and so that's pretty much all there is to it. Somebody makes a request to our root, we return that template, that template makes a request to our room, so that gets the socket connection set up and running, adds them, adds that client to the room, and then from that point forward, they can send messages and we'll handle them appropriately. So let me just go ahead and test this to show you what this looks like gonna open my terminal type in go run dot so that starts my server and I already have two browsers open here now if I type in a message in one I should see it appear in the other send this one responds with hello and there we go the application seems to be working so that does it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I do want to encourage you again to like and please subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.